Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. Grab yourself a coffee and settle in because although the road season is done and dusted for the year, there's already plenty brewing this winter. We have a thrilling new grudge match on the cyclocross fields, the UCI Track Champions League is back and action-packed as ever, and the transfers continue to trickle in, giving us plenty to debate and analyse. That and more on this week's show. This week in the world of racing, we were reminded just how mind-boggling the numbers of the Track Champions League are. Harry Lovrason recorded a whopping 2,000 plus watts in Mallorca. And even the Derny pilots aren't safe. Answers on a postcard as to how this happened to this particular Derny. He's not been out delivering stuff on that in the break, has he? We also learned that Jumbo Visma will become Visma Lisa Bike next season. Not exactly a team name that rolls off the tongue, so pray for Lloydy and the rest of the commentators. And finally, we learned that this was the moment that sparked the Ellie Isabet Thibaut Nace rivalry into life. Thibaut Nace is glued to that wheel of Ellie Isabet. He's going absolutely nowhere. Nace goes up the inside, shoves it up the inside. Oh, it crashes! Cyclocross returned to its native homeland after an excursion to the USA for the World Cup last week, where Thibaut Nace claimed the biggest win in his young career, just the 49 left to catch his father Sven. This is a super prestige event though, so no chance he'll eat into that deficit here. Things didn't start well for Nace though. He went over the bars on a road dirt transition and was shuffled outside the top 20. Isabit saw the opportunity to attack. Maybe in years gone by, this move would have stuck, but Nace was breezing his way back through the field and eventually the lead group became four, with Lars van der Haar and Michael van Torenhout involved too. You couldn't have scripted it better really. Two riders each from Balois Trek Lions and Pals Sals and Bingo, the tactical battle was a joy to watch as the teams traded blows back and forth. Nace possesses a potent sprint on him. You may remember his commanding victory in Stavanger at the Tour of Norway earlier this year. So. Eli Isbitt did everything in his power to take it to Nace on the final lap, so he wasn't faced with a straight up sprint to the line. Nace was gapped by a few meters at moments, but he had Isbitt covered off, and the odds seemed to be moving in his favor all the time. Until this. Nace overcooked his dive bomb up the inside of Isbitt. I think we all reacted similarly to Thibaut's dad on the sidelines too. And that was it, race over. Isabit screamed across the line to celebrate his first win of the season on his birthday as well. Nace faded to fourth with Van Torenhout a close second and Van der Haar in third after he crashed, putting pay to his chances of a better result. Cam Mason, by the way, a solid first outing for the Cyclocross Reds in fifth, just over 30 seconds back. When you think of cyclocross rivalries, only one comes to mind really, of course, Wout van Aert and Matthew van der Poel. But the two multidiscipline specialists aren't expected to start their SEATS campaign for a few weeks at least. And the Isbit Nace tussle is already captivating. I am loving it. To recap, Nace got the better of Isbit in a sprint in Beringen before Isbit ran into issues in the first World Cup event in Waterloo. There, Nace demonstrated his stunning punch to glide to his first World Cup win, celebrating in style too. After Isbit's victory here, it's 2-1. I'm asking myself, can these guys take it to the likes of Van Aert and Van Der Poel, as well as Pickcock, when the multidiscipline megastars head to the CX fields? At 26 years old, Isabit is a bit more of a known quantity, but we must remember that Nace is only 20 years of age. His rate of development could mean that he's shaking it up with the big boys sooner rather than later. It's hard to understand the pressure as well, how much pressure he must be under being the son of such a prolific former winner. So let us know in the comments, can any of these guys take it to Wout van Aert and Mathieu van der Poel this season? Personally, I think Nace will be challenging them this year. We've already seen different facets of his game in just the past few weeks, and he's only going to get better as the races and years go by. Of course, the other key CX rivalry right now is Fem Van Empel and Puck Pietersa. Pietersa was beaten by Van Empel in Waterloo last week, but she wasn't on the start line this time in Overijsa. The world champion was though, and the travel back from the US clearly had no effect on Van Empel, who continued her perfect start to the season with win number three from as many starts. She was aggressive from the start line and established a commanding lead by the end of the opening lap. 
Kaylin Alvarado recovered from a poor start, but by the time she sprung clear of the chasing group, Van Ampel was long gone. Inge van der Heijden rounded out the podium in third. Over in Mallorca, the third season of the Track Champions League kicked off on Saturday evening. Harry Levrason stormed out of the gates, winning the sprint and the Kirin for the maximum 40 points on the night. His main competitor for the blue leader's jersey, Matt Richardson, was beaten by Levrason in the sprint semis and could only muster third in the Kirin, leaving him much to do over the next four rounds. Alessa Catriona Propster or ACP for short, might not be a household name just yet, but it looks like another great German sprinter is rising through the ranks. The 22-year-old won the sprint final ahead of world champion in that discipline, Emma Finucane, who pulled on the leader's jersey by the end of the night after a solid third place in the Kieran final, where Aless Andrews took victory. In the endurance categories, we saw four different winners across the men's and women's races. Japan's Aya Hashimoto is the early leader in the men's category on the back of a strong showing in the scratch race. He lapped the field with six other riders and positioned himself nicely on the last lap to take the maximum 20 points. Canada's Dylan Bibic took the elimination race and slots into second place in the overall rankings. That race was restarted after this huge crash that took down most of the field the first time around. 2021 champion Katie Archbold is the early leader in the women's endurance, with a dominant win in the elimination race and third place in the scratch. Her lead is a slender one though, with the USA's Lily Williams just two points back. Williams instigated a late breakaway in the closing laps of the scratch race and held on to take the win. Okay, on to what we've got coming up for you this week on GCN Plus. And on the boards, you can see the next round of the Track Champions League in Berlin on Saturday. The 2024 Tour de France route will be revealed this week. The presentation will be streamed live on GCN Plus on Wednesday, and as soon as we can, we'll be getting our reaction video up, which will break down the best and the worst parts of both the men's and women's routes. I can't wait to see it because, like us, teams and riders are eagerly waiting for the route so they can plan their 2024 campaign. As riders reveal their schedules, we'll start to see next season take shape. Can't wait. Anyway, in the cyclocross, we have round two of the Super Prestige from Rue de Vorda. That's available live everywhere except Belgium and on Saturday, with round two of the UCI World Cup on Sunday from Mars Mechelen. More territory restrictions on that one, so please check if that's available where you are. Sticking with cyclocross, the USCX concludes this weekend with rounds seven and eight in Falmouth. And we've also got the Singapore Criterium on Sunday, where some of the world's best riders are taking part in what is essentially an exhibition race. As always, we have plenty of news and inside scoops daily on our website. One piece that I implore you to read this week is from GCN writer George Poole, who recounted his day spent with the Thibaut Pinot fan club, the Collective Ultras Pinot, as they are called, at Il Lombardia, which was, of course, Pinot's final race. It really demonstrates how loved Pinot was as a bike racer, for his incredible performances as much as his fragility. It's an excellent read. We'll leave a link to that in the description, so make sure you check it out. Vuelta champion Sepp Kuss has also revealed that he'd like to lead a Grand Tour again, whilst also stating that it was best for everybody that Primoz Roglic left Jumbo Visma. Read his full interview with us on our website, Logan Jones Wilkins has you covered on that one. To round off the Tour of Guanxi, Olaf Koy took his 13th win of the season on his 22nd birthday. Incredible, he's still so young, whilst teammate Milan Veda won the overall. It meant that Jumbo Visma ended the year with 69 wins, 12 ahead of the next best UAE Team Emirates, and the most wins of any World Tour team in one season since Quick Step Floors in 2018, who amassed 72. In the Women's Tour of Guanxi, Daria Pikalik took the victory, meaning she bookended her season rather neatly. She also won the opening stage of the Santos Tour Down Under in January, so a particularly satisfying one for Killian Kelly and other cycling statisticians globally. Other news now, and Geraint Thomas has signed a contract extension with Ineos Grenadiers. That will keep him with the team until the end of 2025, making it 16 seasons with Team Sky or Ineos. Elsewhere, Movistar have signed Davide Formolo from UEE Team Emirates. Interesting move that one, particularly as he won two one-day races in Italy within the last month. Formolo is a classy rider who has finished on the podium of a monument before. Let me know what you make of that particular move in the comments below. 
Javier Romo will move to Movistar 2 after a three-year stint at Astana Kazakhstan. The Spanish team have also confirmed the signing of Pleo Sanchez, who is particularly impressive for Burgos Biachi this year at the Vuelta España. Rui Costa is now confirmed to be going to EF Education Easy Post, while Jumbo Visma have signed Bart Lemon from Human Powered Health. He arrived at the sport late after an early career in the Air Force. Torsten Train is on his way to Bahrain Victorious on a two-year deal. Great to see him earn a place in the World Tour after he recovered from cancer in 2022. DSM women's team have signed three riders. Raquelia Barbieri moves over from Live Racing, while two Brits also join the team. Abby Smith from EF Education Tipco and Josie Nelson from Coop High Tech Products. Jonas Gregor, the man who won the KOM competition for Uno X at Paris-Nice, has been snapped up by Lotto Destiny. And Mark Soro, who thought he might be without a job in 2024, has found a home at Groupam FDG, with whom he spent the first six years of his career. Okay, that's all we have time for this week. Remember to stay tuned for the Tour de France route reveal on Wednesday. Dan will be back on next week's racing news show. But from me, it's goodbye for now.